Hi! Welcome to another Scratch Tutorial. Today we are going to make a choose your own adventure, which is going to combine everything we learned into one epic interactive story. So here's an example I made last year. She used to be a prince or a princess. So I chose prince and a fairy. Wait, where's my locket? Someone stole your locket. I'll find it. Thank you. Not you're here. Yeah, and I have a locket. We could sell this for quite a bit. Where did you get this? The prince. Sorry, Caleb. Please, we really need this locket. Do I let them keep the locket? Yes. You can keep the locket. You need it far more than the prince does. Thank you, great fairy. We are forever in your debt. You can play it with a princess and an elf. Wait, where's my locket? Someone stole your locket? I'll find it. Thank you. Not, you're here. Yeah, I have a locket. We can sell this for quite a bit. Where did you get this? The princess. Sorry, Caleb. Please, we really need this locket. Do I let them keep the locket? No! I have the locket. Very good, elf. The troublemakers will go to jail now. So you'll see that I programmed this with a lot of different characters, the prince or princess and elf or fairy. And I use prince, princess, elf, fairy in the script. So I actually use variables to keep track of who's who. Instead of saying prince, princess, elf, fairy, I use the variable person in distress, <laughs> the prince or the princess, and the knight, the fairy or the elf. Another thing I did is I took a, this person, D, and I made him into Caleb, and I took this goblin, goblin, wow, what creative name is, and I turned the goblin and not. Not in Caleb or from this Dungeons and Dragons series I like. So I took these characters that I'm familiar with and turned basic scratch sprites into those familiar characters. So here's another choose your own adventure and I'm going to just walk you through what I created. It's a lot easier than the castle one I made. Or maybe it's harder. Hmm. Anyway, first thing I want to do is drag in two possible characters, Sasha and characters, and characters just comes with a ton of different possible characters. I'm just going to go with the first one. Any of them would be really cool. So now you have two possible characters, and I'm going to drag in an arrow. The first thing we're going to do is set up these characters. So, one flag is clicked. One flag is clicked. For both characters. I'm going to go the position I put them in and show them. And I'm going to have the arrow go to more or less the middle like this. One flag is clicked. Also show. I'm going to give it the ability to move right and left. So for the right, we're going to change x by 10. For the left, we're going to change x by negative 10. And now it's moving. Just like in our maze game, we're going to set rotation style to left, right, and point in direction negative 90 when it goes left and point in direction 90 when it turns right. So now we're just going to have our little guy say, choose a character. And forever, if you're either touching Sasha or character two, I'm going to give character two a name. How about Jesse? Jesse was the name of this old Disney TV show that I watched when I was a kid. So if you're touching Sasha or Jesse, 
You're going to wait for a little bit and then hide. I'll explain a lot why we wait for 0.1 seconds before we hide in just a bit. Now, for Sasha, forever, if we are touching the arrow, we're going to broadcast. Sasha and I'm going to right click this part the forever scroll over to duplicate and now the forever and everything below it and inside of it is copied in that could be useful but to copy it to another character you just need to drag it and it'll snap back to where it was but also appear in the next one so touch Jesse I'm going to broadcast Jesse when I receive Sasha, I'm going to ask, what's your name? Then I'm going to make a new variable. I'm going to delete this automatic one and say, character name. I'm going to set that character name to the, whatever the answer is. That way, instead of just having it once and going, hi, name, we can use it throughout our entire skit, and that'll be fun. So we can go operators join remember join hi character name nice to meet you that might take longer than two seconds so i'm gonna wait for like four seconds sounds good and then i'm gonna broadcast hedgy you'll see what that means later i'm gonna copy and paste this into jesse but you'll notice that for my own Choose Your Own Adventure, they basically just said the exact same thing. They just looked different. That's not as fun. So, what if we give them different personalities? Jesse can just say, What's up, character name? Nice to meet you. And just some little things. After you touch the arrow, you can stop the script to break the forever loop. The same for the arrow. That way we don't have a bunch of forever loops running at the same time. And then, when I received the other one, Sasha was picked, we're just going to hide. I'm going to copy that into Sasha, so that when Jesse's clicked, Sasha's going to hide. Perfect. Choose a character. We're going to go... Jesse. My name is Harry Potter. And you'll notice that we have this little guy wait 0.1 seconds so that it's still there long enough for Jesse to sense that the arrow touched her. And what's this hedgy we're broadcasting is this little hedgehog who is the cutest thing in the entire world. I make so much of my stuff fantasy. I think it's only fair to make this a mystery. Boom. We got ourselves a little detective hat. I really don't know how old school detective hats look. I'll just give him a Sherlock hat. Boom. <laughs> oh, it's too big for his little head. I'm going to also give him a little magnifying glass because he's an expert detective. There's your little magnifying glass, little dude. Oh, that's just too adorable. So when flag is clicked, this little hedgehog is going to hide. But once Sasha and Jesse are done getting the name, when I receive Hedgy, if, hmm, we need a way to tell whether Jesse or Sasha was chosen. So we're going to make another variable, sprite. Differentiating between the Jesse sprite and the Sasha sprite. So we're going to set the sprite to Jesse. Jesse was touched and then going into Sasha's code we're going to set the sprite to Sasha. She was picked. And now we can say if the sprite equals Sasha then Hedgie's going to go about here and
flip around to go look at Sasha. And if Jesse was chosen, we're going to have little Hedgy go about here and go and talk to Jesse. And classic video game, we're going to go say character name. That's whoever the player's name is. Thank goodness you're here. Somebody stole the treasure of Sierra Madre. Oh no! <gasps> and now, when our characters receive Hedgy, we're going to wait, remember our weights and control, about six seconds. So we can say this person, thank goodness you're here, and then for four seconds, somebody stole the treasure of Sierra Madre. Actually, maybe we'll just divide it three and three. And our character can go after waiting six seconds. Where should I start looking? I'm just going to drag this into Sasha as well. Now Hedgy's going to wait about two seconds. And then ask either space with the alien or the woods with the witch. Space or witch. So that way we know what to enter. Where do you want to go? So this means you can travel to space the alien or go to the woods to question the witch. One of them stole it. Hmm. Which one? We're going to let them guess. But for now, we're going to do an if else. If the answer, let's just say if the first letter of the answer is S, they're talking about space. So we're going to broadcast space. Otherwise, we're going to broadcast woods. And now we're going to go into our backdrops. I'm just going to delete this blank backdrop and pull in a woods backdrop and a space backdrop. Woo. Now when I receive space, boop, we're going to want to maybe go to one side and I can make a cute little space helmet. Oh, that's a huge space helmet. Whoops. We want a decent sized space helmet. And then I'm just going to try to copy and paste the space helmets. Amazing. Woo. And they'll both have space helmets and they will be hanging out on the side. I can bring Sasha up a little bit so that they're even. We're going to have them start in their normal outfit. And then when we receive space, we're going to switch to our space outfit. Awesome. And that also gives a little bit of room for some customization. Woo. Oops. There we go. We need one character with a helmet and one character without a helmet. Wonderful. So now they'll be spacesuit buddies. The hedgehog will have to hide when, after it broadcasts. And both of them will say, look for clues. Wonderful. And now we can hide a little something that'll tip off our player. We can use a star. Hopefully you remember it from our collection game last week. And we can make our star purple so it blends in. Maybe a different type of purple, like a pink or purple. Yes. Probably want to get rid of the outline. Maybe it blends in a little too well. Want it to be slightly, slightly visible. And then make a lighter inside. We can put the star in the corner here and the star will be hidden. Woo! Flag is clicked, it'll hide. And when space key is pressed, no. When I receive space, yes. We're going to go to a little corner and show. And when the sprite is clicked, we're going to broadcast caught. And this little star also hide just in the fog in the corner and I'll make it camouflage, blend in with the background. Boom. So then when I receive forest or woods, yep, I know my broadcasts. We're going to go to a different location and show. Woo. And then once we broadcast caught, we're just going to hide. Awesome. So now let's test it because it's always very important to test. That's one thing with the backdrops. Backdrops aren't changing. So when the flag is clicked, let's switch backdrop 
to the jungle, but when I receive space and woods, we're just going to switch the backdrop to Space City 2 and woods. And we never would have caught that if we hadn't tested our code. Woohoo! Testing! Is my name? Hermione Granger. Hello, Hermione Granger. And now, something I totally forgot was to make our hedgehog show at the beginning. Let's try this again. Choose the character. I'm going to choose Sasha this time. My name is Draco Malfoy. All Harry Potter characters. I want to start... Oh, Spacer Witch. Oops, I meant Spacer Woods. Ha 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 ha. I'm gonna choose... The Woods. Cool. When I receive Woods... I'm not supposed to have a helmet on. But I'm still supposed to move over and... Say sir, look for clues. So... Copy that over. Overall, we have a pretty functional code. It's working well. So now, we're at the part where we choose a character. Let's branch out from Harry Potter and go Piper from Percy Jackson. And we're going to go through the Piper. I think I just here. Somebody stole the treasure of Sierra Madre. Because we're part of the Sierra Madre Library. Woo, coding at the Sierra Madre Library. We're at the part where we click the star and it hides after it broadcasts caught. So, who are we catching? Well, remember that there's the alien. Let's make him look sort of mad. There's the alien in space, and there's a witch. Oh, she looks really friendly too. A witch in the forest. Or, yep. So, when my little alien receives caught, if the backdrop name equals space city 2 it's gonna show because when he starts he's gonna hide and maybe he'll say you got the wrong guy I'm innocent but when our witch receives caught, she can go, fine, you caught me. Here's your treasure. Frowny face. And we can do a little bit of animation. She can go, fine, you caught me. And then switch costume C and give you a nice book. Because we all know that the greatest treasure is in a book. I think this just means that I love the Siermaji library too much to be advertising books. And it'll be the treasure of Sierra Madre. So maybe we'll just have drawing of the mountains of Sierra Madre that are actually just a stack of books. The Sierra Madre Public Library? Oh my goodness! Well, I was close. Woo. Or maybe the treasure can just be something from your favorite video game. Um, like a Minecraft diamond. Maybe it'll be a Minecraft diamond and a wonderful library book. This is a huge book. Well, she'll go, fine, you caught me. Here's your treasure. She's smiling evilly. Maybe we can flip that smile upside down. So now what we have is... Oh, we need more coding. And she'll only appear if the backdrop is called Woods. And when flag is clicked, she will hide. Choose a character. What is my name? Annabeth, also from Percy Jackson.
gonna go to space. I found the clue. It's a star. Oh no, we got the wrong guy! Oh no! And then... Oh, they said Jesse instead of Woods. That's funny. What's my name? My name can be... Nico D'Angelo, also from Percy Jackson. Nico and D'Angelo, good thank goodness are here. Somebody stole the treasure of Sierra Madre. Why should I start looking? Well, we checked space last time, so let's go to the woods. Let's look for clues. Woo! Yay, we did it! There's only one last thing we should do. We've covered motion and looks and events and controls and sensing and operators and variables. There's just one last thing. Sound. So, here's how we're going to do this. When we begin, we're going to have a little arrow. The arrow is only there when we begin. Okay, we can go guitar chord. Too aggressive. Yes. We have a strangely chill choose your character menu. One flag is clicked. Remember that if we just start sound forever, it'll sound horrible. I'll give you only a couple seconds of torture. Very weird. Because it just keeps starting without ever actually playing it. It just keeps starting and starting and starting and starting. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four thousand. Yeah, that was about four seconds. And then wait four seconds before you start it again. So that we can... Never really finish it. More testing. enough. So then we just have that on constant loop. So we're going to stop all sounds and stop other sc scripts in the sprite. So that way we break this forever loop and this forever loop. And now it just stops immediately. This is actually nice music for the what's your name as well. So maybe we can stop other scripts in the sprite stop all sounds once they receive Hedgy. Because remember that we receive Hedgy, Hedgy the Hedgehog. That was the name of a little stuffed hedgehog when I was in kindergarten. So we broadcast Hedgy as soon as we're done talking. So as soon as we're done talking, you also want to end everything. You want to end the sound in the arrow. Oh, that's when I received Cotton, not Hedgy. Oops. So then now that we have Hedgy, things are getting serious. Somebody stole the treasure! Again, epic mysteries. So let's go back into our music loops. And I'm going to go with movie two. <laughs> Wonderful. We're going to do the same thing where when I receive Hedgy, forever I'm going to start movie two. I'm going to try to time how long this thing is. Four, five, six. I want to say that's about six seconds. It's a little bit longer than six seconds, but six seconds is fine. So we're just going to play that until we stop all sounds, and then we need to stop the other scripts in the sprite. The music of all of the Percy Jackson characters. Hedgy. Hedgy, you good? Oh, it's because the arrow stops all sounds. So maybe we also need to wait like 0.1 seconds. And then next step, we're going to go into our little star. 
for our space and forest music just because it's just one sprite that'll be in both. It'll be much easier. For the forest, I want to be a little creepy and have a little bit of ooh, what's going to happen. So I'm going to pick this drip drop. Because it's not too scary, but you're just sort of there in a random forest. You're in the woods and you might hear some like dripping water from the plants. So, forever, start sound, drip drop, and wait. One, two, three, say like three and a half seconds. Yeah, it's pretty much about three seconds. Cool. So that's fun. We have a good woods sound. And now, I'm gonna go back into loops. And there's one with space in its name. Three, four. Sure, I'll say it's like four seconds. Same exact thing. I'm going to play dance space. Wait four seconds. Yep, I'm pretty happy with that. And then, when the sprite is clicked, it means we're going on to caught with the little mad alien and the evil witch. So we're going to stop all the sounds, and we're going to stop the other scripts in the sprite so it doesn't keep looping. Then we're going to broadcast caught, where this little guy will probably play some really emotional music because you got the wrong guy. Ah. Emotional piano. This is about five, six, seven, eight. Wow, that's pretty long. I'm going to make it wait eight seconds. This will also happen when I receive caught. And then after I'm innocent, that's just the end. <laughs> There's not really much of a the end. I haven't coded anything after that, so I'm just gonna stop. It's a sort of sad end. Going to just stop everything, including the sounds. But the witch, she's not going to be all sad. She's, she's like, fine, you caught me. I am evil. So here she is in cave. It's much more evil sounding. <laughs> Time how long that is. Four, five, six, seven. Say that's about seven. So same exact thing. seven seconds but it's good enough and then we're just going to stop all sounds and stop all just like we did with our little alien beautiful and that's it have a cute little choose your own adventure So, you can make your own choose your own adventure, feel free to send it to me, or ask me for help, serumadricoding1 at gmail.com, and I hope you enjoyed this scratch tutorial series, and that you have as much fun coding in scratch as I do, and that you enjoyed watching my videos as much as I enjoyed making them. I hope you have a great time coding, and that will be all. Bye!
Send any questions to seermadricoding at gmail.com.